So this is Mrs. Ward, and I am going to go over the second half of the 9.4 notes on mathematical induction. So again, we're using our mathematical induction to prove when we recognize a pattern, we're going to prove that it works, and we're going to find, um, so we're going to continue on our, what we were working on last class. So if I'm, pro so last class we proved summation. So we had something like this, and we went through the three steps that we, we did where we proved S sub k plus 1 was true. Then we, so we proved the sum of 1 was true. That was the first step. The second step was proving or assuming that the SK term was true. And then the third thing we did is we proved that if I took the sum of k plus 1 or the sum of the next term that was sum equal to the sum of the previous term plus the next term. So that's what, those are the three things that we did for um, proving summations. We're still going to do, do proofs, but we're going to do we're going to do an inequality, and then we're going to do factors, which is the other two types. So if I tell you to use mathematical induction to prove this inequality, the first thing you're going to do, just like we did before, is you're going to prove that it works for one. So I'm going to put in one and do one plus one factorial is greater than two to the first. Oh. And when I look here, I realize that n is supposed to start with 2. So my first term isn't going to start with 1. My first term is going to start with 2. So I am going to change this to a 2. So I'm going to have 2 plus 1 factorial is greater than 2 squared. 2 plus 1 factorial will be 3 factorial. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which will be 6. Um, 2 squared would be 4, so is 6 greater than 4? And you're going to say yes, so therefore it's true for the first term. Remember, in this example, the first term begins when n is equal to 2. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assume, so assume, assume, that k plus 1 factorial is greater than 2 to the k. Again, just substituting in the k for the n and making the assumption that it is, it is true. Then the last thing I'm going to do is, just like I did before, is I'm going to prove it true for the k plus 1 term. So when I prove it true for the k plus 1 term, I want to prove and when I put in k plus 1, so k plus 1 plus 1 factorial, that's greater than 2 to the k plus 1. So I can have k plus 2 factorial is greater than 2 to the k plus 1. I just simplified. Now what I'm going to do when I do inequalities is I'm going to go up to what I assumed was true, and I'm going to want to kind of recreate this situation. So I'm going to want to write the k plus 1 factorial is greater than 2 to the k. So I'm going to go back down here, and k plus 2 factorial, remember, can be written as k plus 2 times k plus 1, because you keep on reducing it by one number each time. I get to that k plus 1, so I'm going to hit factorial, is greater than, and then 2 to the k plus 1, I'm going to rewrite as 2 times k, 2 to the k, because remember, this is understood to be 1, I multiply two numbers with the same base, I add the exponent. So this 1 plus k will be the k plus 1. So those are the same. Then I sort of pick out what I know. So I know that this k plus 1 factorial is greater than this 2 to the k. So I am going to say that I, since I know that these are true, I just have to prove that k plus 2 is greater than 2, because that's what's left here, because I already know that these guys are already true. So um, while n has, to, n has to be greater than or equal to 2, so no matter what number, since these are the same, and it can't be a negative number here, this is always going to be true. So I proved that, um, I'm going to go back up to my original statement that n plus 1 factorial is greater than 2 to the n when n is greater than or equal to 2. 
So by putting in the k plus 1, pulling out what I knew was true, I can prove that what's left also is true. Okay, proving uh, factors of mathematics, proving factors by mathematical induction. So if I'm trying to prove that 3 is a factor of the n cubed minus n plus 3. So following those same steps that I did before, I'm going to prove a true for the first. So I'm going to say 1 to the third minus 1 plus 3. So that would be 1 minus 1 plus 3. So that's going to be 3. And technically, to show that 3 is a factor, I can write it as 3 times something. So 3 times 1. So therefore, 3 is a factor of 3. 3 is a factor of the first term. Then I'm going to make the assumption. I'm going to assume that 3 is a factor of, and then I'm going to say, k to the third minus k plus 3. So I'm going to assume that that is true. Then the next thing I'm going to try to prove is I'm going to prove that 3 is a factor of, and then in place of the k, I'm going to write 1, so k plus 1 cubed minus k plus 1 plus 3. Then, in order to do this, I am going to have to follow this. So I'm going to have to take k plus 1 to the third power, which, if you watch the 9-5 video, that's easy. If you haven't, you're going to remember from algebra 2, and I'm just going to tell you I know it. So this raised to the third power is k to the third plus 3k squared plus 3k plus 1. Again, if you don't know that, it's an opposite side. It's just k plus 1 times k plus 1 times k plus 1. You can do two real quick, and then you're going to have to do your box or your rainbow or whatever method you do to find the next. So here's what I have. I have k to the third plus 3k squared plus 3k plus 1. And distributed this negative sign and got negative k minus 1 and then 3. I'm not going to simplify anything. I'm going to go up here and see what I know 3 is a factor of. I know that 3 is a factor of k to the third minus k plus 3. So I'm going to sort of like put those in a group by themselves. So k to the third minus k plus 3. So I'm not taking those away or anything. I'm just going to rewrite them in a group up in the front. So I'm going to have k to the third minus k plus 3. And then I'm going to take everything that's left. So that will be plus 3k squared plus 3k plus 1 minus 1. Well, this plus 1 minus 1 will be 0. I know that 3 is a factor of this. This 3 is a factor, and that's from step number two. And here I can write 3 times k squared plus k, showing that 3 is a factor of that, so therefore 3 is a factor. So if you know, if you remember, if the 3 is a factor of the first term, and 3 is a factor of the second term, then 3 is a factor of the whole thing. So therefore, 3 is a factor of that n to the third minus n plus 3. And I do believe that's my original statement, and there's my proof. Okay, uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to find a formula for the nth term of a sequence, and then we're going to like make a guess as to what we think the pattern is. And then based on that guess, we're going to, we're going to go back to like proving it by mathematical induction. So let's say I have the, I, I have the 3, 7, 11, 15. I can plainly see here that each time I'm going up by 4, my first term is 3. So that's how they came up with this formula 4n minus 1. So now that's, so this would be my eighth of n term. Now I'm going to try and find my sums. So the sum of the first term is 3 because it's 3. The sum of my second term is going to be that sum of the first term plus my next term, which is 7, and I'm going to get 10. 
Then I am going to do the sum of the third term. So that's going to be 10 plus 11, and I'm going to get 21. The sum of my fourth term is going to be that 21 plus 15, and I'm going to get 36. And then if I wanted to do one more, which I really do, so I'm going to, I'm going to have 36. And then if I add 4, that would be 19. So plus 19, and that is going to equal 5, 55. So now we're going to skip. So when I look here, I see the pattern. So I'm trying to find a pattern from 3, 10, 21, 36, 55. And we're just going to skip ahead for a second. And I'm going to look at these, which are the finite differences. So I have the first differences, second differences, third differences. So when I find the first difference between two numbers, like 3 and 5, and that's 2. And I'm always going this way, 5 minus 3, 8 minus 5. When I do that, I get 2, 3, 4, 1. If those numbers were all the same, like if I were to go back here, and when I list these numbers, it's 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. That means I have a linear relationship, or that, and that's why I can write it as 4n minus 1, because this n would be raised to the first power, because the first differences are the same. Maybe this is certain. So if I go here and I, so the first difference is I get 3, 5, 8, 12. When I do my second difference is I do 5 minus 3 and I get 2, 8 minus 3 and I get 3, 12, 4, and, and that's how I get these here are my, oh, those are my, those are my first differences, sorry. When I do my second differences and I take the 3 minus 2, I get 1, 4 minus 2. These are all the same. If these are all the same, that means I have a quadratic relationship. And I can write an equation for a quadratic equation for that and, and figure out what that pattern would look like. If the second differences weren't the same, I would keep on going. If the third differences were the same, that would be a cubic relationship. If the fourth differences were the same, then you'd have a, a function raised to the fourth power. So let's go back to the one that we were working on, because we're going to skip the whole thinking about it and just skip to the differences. So if I go and I find my first differences, I'm going to take 10 minus 7, 3 and get 7. 21 minus 10 and get 11. 36 minus 21 and get 15. 55 minus 36 and get 19. Those first differences are not the same, which I wasn't expecting them to be the same. Now I'm going to find the second differences. So my second differences are going to be 11 minus 7, which is 4. 15 minus 11, which is 4, 19 minus 15, which is 4. So my second difference is the same, so I know it's a quadratic relationship. So I mean, that means I'm coming up with a quadratic equation. Just to remind you, quadratic equation, when we did it before, was y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. It's the same thing for this, except for we're going to do like a sub n is equal to, well, put that in at the end. So here, I have, this is the quadratic, this is the quadratic equation I'm going to come up for, with. So I'm going to come up with ordered pairs. So my ordered pair is going to be like my first term, my sum was 3. My second term, my sum was 10. My third term, my sum was 21. I just used the first three. Remember, I have three unknowns. My A, my B, and my C, which means I need to have three ordered pairs. It does not matter which three ordered pairs that I use. Then once you see this, you should say, oh my gosh, Mrs. Ward, I remember this. We just did this when we did matrices and when we did solving systems of equations. I know how to do this, but just refresh my memory. And I would love to refresh your memory. So here we go. So my Y is 3, so I'm going to have 3 is equal to A x squared plus b times x plus c. So I'm going to have an equation that's going to be, I'm going to flip it while I'm doing it. I'm going to have a plus b plus c is equal to 3. Then when I do 210, skipping all that work, I'm going to have 4a plus 2b plus c is equal to 10. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. 10 is equal to a times 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c. That's how I got that 4a. 
doing the next one, truly skipping. I'm going to have 9a plus 3b plus 1c is equal to 21. And I don't care how you solve it, as long as you show me what you're going to do. I'm going to do my favorite. I'm going to put it into a matrix, and I'm going to do reduced row echelon form. So when I do that, I pick it up my calculator, have a calculator page, menu, statistics, no, not statistics, wrong class, uh, matrices, reduce row echelon form. I'm going to create a matrix. See, I was on the sums. Uh, three rows, four columns. I'm going to hit OK, and I have one, 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 and I believe it was three. And then we have four, two, ten. Whoopsie. Oh, no, 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 don't do that. Why are you being like that? Oh. See, haste makes waste. So one. Okay, um, I did that wrong. Menu, vectors, uh, reduced row echelon form. I put row, row echelon form. So then I wonder if I can go up and grab this. I'm going to try it. How bad can it be? And I'm going to back out the RREF. And that looks like it fits right. And I get this, 2, 1, 0. So then I'm going to go up here, over here. And I get two one zero. So two one zero. So A B C. So this is going to be before be Y is equal to two X squared plus X, and then I would have no C. The only difference is now is since we're talking about a sum, I mean, the notation is going to be sum of N 
is equal to 2n squared plus n. You can leave it like that. You can factor out n. If you said, well, hey, Mrs. Ward, I was looking at this, and, and I didn't knew all, need to do all this. Like, here's my first term, and I multiply it by 3. Here's my second term, and I multiply it by 5. Here's my third term, and I multiply it by 7. Here's my uh, fourth term, and I multiply it by 9. If you see this, and you can see that it's the first, whatever term you're on, and then to get to this guy, the second number, it's going to be n 2n plus 1. So if you did that, that's that's the same thing as this 2n squared plus n. Either way, if you want a surefire way of getting the right answer every single time, then do your first differences, do your second differences, whatever the pattern happens to be, do that um, system of equations. All right, these are called uh, some, are, some of powers of integers. So if I want you to use these, I will give these to you. So this is just saying that if I have a sum from i is equal to 1 of whatever i to n, this is the formula that will give me the sum of whatever digit I'm on, so, or whatever term I'm on. So here's the all the formulas. I'm just showing you how I expect you to use it. So this one is saying I'm, I want i squared. So I'm going up here to i squared, which is this guy here. I'm copying down. I'm copying down. I'm copying down this n times n plus 1. So that's going to be n times n plus 1 plus, oh, times, 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 times. 2n plus 1 over 6. So in this case, n is equal to 6. So to solve this, I would have 6, 6 plus 1, 2 times 6 plus 1. So this will end up being over 6. So this will be 6 times 7 plus times 13 over 6. The 6s will simplify. So you have 7 times 13, which will end up being 91. Hope I did that right. So if I have somewhere I have terms, I'm going to go back and do the same thing. The n to the third is that n squared uh, times n plus 1. All over 4, that is n to the third, all by squared, squared, and then minus n, and n is this guy here, which is n times n plus 1, all over 2, I believe, all over 2, got that one right, and then I'm going to plug 7 in, so I'm going to have 7 squared over plus 1 squared. And then you can put in your calculator, or you can think of this, this will be 49 times 64 over 4 minus 7 times 8 over 2. This will be 16. This will be 4. So this will be minus 28. I have no idea what 49 times 16 is. I should know. Minus 7 and 4. And then minus um, so 7, 84, and then 756 is my final answer. Again, I could check that on my calculator. And we did those already, and um, this one will tell you find the quadratic model. So here I'm going to do my first differences, which I, I guess I really don't have to. But I kind of like doing them. Those are my first differences. My second differences are 2, so that tells you that I can do it. And then you're trying to find the quadratic model. Again, I'm going back to um, my matrices, and I'm going to do uh, the order pairs 1, negative 2, 0, 2, and 3, 4. And then put in a uh, matrices or whatever. Just make sure you go back instead of having the y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, which is what we did for the matrices, that you do a sub n is equal to n times whatever. So just make sure you change the notation. All right, well, I hope these notes help, and I will see you next time in class.